Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, verses 1 to 6. In this passage, God's name is translated Lord as Jehovah, which means the self-revealing one. The Hebrew word Roha or Ra, which means to tend, pasture, shepherd. Valley shadows a rod and a staff. A valley is a low spot in the middle of a mountain range. It is frequently a site of vulnerability and danger. Things that want to disrupt or hurt you can hide in the shadows. Even in the valley that casts shadows of death, David assures us in this verse that Jehovah Rohi brings solace via his presence, his rod, and his staff. Almost everyone wishes to live on top of a mountain. The mountains give you a sense of being on top of the world. Your job is good. Your health is satisfactory, your family is favorable, your funds are adequate, and your faith is reasonable. Everything is well on top of the mountain. But one thing about mountains is that you can't get from one to the other without passing through a valley. Valleys separate the mountains. Even while life's valleys are unavoidable, there is good news. A valley serves us as a reminder that another peak lies ahead. It is for this reason that David wrote, even though I walk through the valley. He didn't write, even though I sit in the valley and whine. You must trek through the valley in order to reach the next peak. You must continue because walking through it is the only way out. The hills cast shadows when the sun sets behind a mountain on either side of the valley. Sheep aren't exceptionally competent, so they might interpret the shadows as a warning that night is approaching, and they might become alarmed. The sheep would be scared since foxes, wolves, and hyenas come out at night. But when the shadows seem to close in, the shepherd encourages the sheep to keep moving, even if they are terrified. Remember that God performed some of his best work in the dark when he permits you to be in the valley of the shadows where things are dark and you just want to give up and quit. Because you are focusing attentively on him as he leads you through these dark moments, you can really see him more clearly. That isn't to say you won't feel afraid. The reality of the shadow of death was not denied by David. He confirmed that regardless of how things appear in the valley, how we feel, or the darkness that surrounds us. We must not be afraid since God's presence, his rod, and his staff comfort us. We're not on our own. David's answer to discouragement in Psalm 23 is Jehovah Rohi himself. What you're looking at can often determine your level of fear. Will you glance at the shadows or the shepherd when you're walking through the valley? Valleys are unmistakably gloomy areas. The shepherd's rod and staff, on the other hand, provide comfort and care. A shepherd uses his rod to repel enemy attacks and his staff to lead the sheep or to free a stranded animal from a thicket. You're safer with God in a dark valley, in his presence, than you would be anywhere else. In the lion's cave, the prophet Daniel was safe and at ease, but the king in his castle sat awake all night worrying. You're better off with God in a bad situation than you are without him in a good situation. So continue walking. Don't give up just yet. If the Lord is your shepherd, you can be assured that he has your back. A table, oil, and an overflowing cup. The next portion of Psalm 23 focuses to our physical needs. David writes, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. An enemy is someone who poses a threat to your safety. 
it can manifest itself in a person, a thing, or the devil himself and his demons. Nonetheless, David promises us that God sets a banquet for us in the midst of our enemies. What was the source of this imagery? The shepherd wore a belt with a cloth in it. Whenever he came across a lost sheep, he spread out the cloth and placed grass and fodder on it so the sheep could eat. Foxes, coyotes, and hyenas had to keep their distance while the sheep ate in the shelter of the shepherd. The notion that the Lord himself prepares our food is essential to our concept of God as our shepherd. We are secure from our enemies when we are in his presence. Our opponents have no power over God. All of them are dwarfed in comparison to him. In the middle of a crisis, he understands how to provide for us. Even when we're at odds, he can find a way to make something out of nothing. In the midst of our enemies, our shepherd not only prepares a supper for us, but also anoints our heads with oil. Sheep frequently strayed into the thickets in search of berries. Because of the thorns, when the shepherd pulled the sheep from the bush, its head was frequently injured or bleeding. The shepherd would massage the animal's head with oil. God knows how to calm you down with his anointing oil, my friend. He either dispenses a solution to your problem or provides you with the tranquility you require to survive the difficulty. My cup overflows, David continues. He is reminding us here that, despite the existence of opponents and life's wounds, he has more than enough to get through his circumstance. He has so much, in fact, that his cup is overflowing. Jesus is feeding the crowds with barley loaves and fish comes to mind. After everything was said and done, the disciples had to gather up baskets of leftovers since God had provided more food than the people could consume. And do you recall Jesus telling Peter to go out into the deep and cast his net for the fish? So many fish were caught in the net that Peter was worried his boat would sink under the weight of it all. God knows how to provide you with everything you need to live the life he has called you to live. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. If you look to God in every situation, you will find that he has more than enough grace to fulfill your every need. God's house, loving kindness, and goodness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, verse 6. David may have started with a word other than surely. He may have used the words hopefully, maybe, or even perhaps. David, on the other hand, did not waver in his belief, concluding his psalm with the words surely. Two sheepdogs must surely defend you as you trek across your gloomy valley, David wrote. The first is called goodness, while the second is called loving kindness. The sheepdog's job is to go behind the scenes and keep the flock moving in the right direction. God's goodness and loving kindness are always with us, guiding and directing us in the correct route. As a result, you will spend eternity in the Lord's house you will realize that God is able to supply all of your spiritual, directional, physical, emotional, and everlasting needs once you understand the power of the name jehovah Roha. In other words, when the Lord is your shepherd, you can rest assured that he will look after you. He is on your side, and he is taking you to a place unlike anything you've ever experienced. So, is God not only your savior, but also your shepherd? Have you completely surrendered to him as a helpless sheep? Until then, you'll have to navigate your own way through the valley of shadows rather than following Jehovah Rohi along the route of righteousness through green pastures and still streams. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being my shepherd, for being the one who directs my life. 
please don't let me disregard you. I'll look to you, listen to your voice, and follow your direction like a sheep. In my life, I trust you to be the good shepherd, wise shepherd, loving shepherd, and strong shepherd. Father, in my life, I trust you to be the good shepherd, the wise shepherd, the loving shepherd, and the strong shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for providing me with all I require right now. Thank you for providing nourishment, shelter, water, air, and light. I appreciate your generosity, love, mercy, and kindness in my life so much. When I'm tempted to turn to another source, remind me that you've already provided everything I need for today. I have faith in you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for only allowing me to rest in the finest pastures. Thank you for knowing where to find the freshest and most tender food. I'm going to follow you wherever you take me. I'm grateful that you recognize when and where I need to eat to refuel. Thank you, Lord, for also leading me to some still springs where I could be refreshed, renewed, and restored. For me, stillness can be difficult at times, but I'll put my faith in you to recognize when I need rest and refreshment in my life. Thank you for providing me with clean, tranquil waters at a time when I needed them. Thank you for replenishing me while I relax beside these peaceful waters, Father. Thank you for knowing what will happen next in my life. You are aware of when I require rest and when I require movement. In my life, I will trust your perfect timing. Would you grant me the peace of remaining alongside these placid waters till you rise and take me ahead once more? And God, I want to be a blessing to others. For the sake of your name, I want to walk in a way that is worthy of my calling and serve you. Provide me the bravery, power, and fortitude to follow you without hesitation. Thank you, Lord, for always being with me. You never abandon or abandon me. I thank you for the fact that there is no place I can go where I won't be in your presence. I'm so grateful that you're always there for me in both the light and the dark. You're with me at all hours of the day and night. You are constantly with me. Thank you, Father, for keeping me safe because you are with me. Thank you for protecting and comforting me with your rod and staff. I'm grateful that you keep any risks away from me that don't need to be there. I can sleep soundly knowing that I am in your capable hands. You hem me in from behind and ahead. Thank you for keeping me safe. Thank you for chasing after me and following me all the days of my life with your goodness and mercy. Thank you for pursuing me, remaining close to me, and watching over me every day of my life. You have blessed me with your unwavering love for me. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die in my place. Thank you for reconciling me to you through your son's sacrifice on the cross. I am welcome to live with you eternally as a result of his dying. It's wonderful to know that life on earth isn't over. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.